The Scottish Government last summer, during the massacres of August 2014, uh, made a call for an arms embargo against the State of Israel. The Scottish TUC added their voice to that, made their own call uh, last week in their Congress at AIR, that is in April 2015. And these voices are joined to those of Amnesty International and many other bodies uh, responding to Israel's repeated massacres of Palestinians by calling for an end to the flow of arms to Israel and also from Israel, um, which sustains that, that um, terrible capability. There are many things that we can do to support the injured and beleaguered people of Palestine. But we would argue the Scottish Palestine Solidarity Campaign that the number one contribution that we can make, the item that ought to be at the top of all our priorities, is ending this flow of arms. Ending the Scottish arms trade with Israel and, uh, and elsewhere in the world, uh, supporters of Palestinian human rights, also placing this, similarly placing this at the top of their agenda. Because the horrible truth is that Scottish weapons, uh, it's now well known, are being used to massacre uh, uh, Palestinians. Last year we saw that items, components made in the Raytheon plant in Glenrothes Fife in Scotland uh, included a guidance system for the Paveway to 500 pound bomb. And so therefore Scottish components were being used to guide these hellish weapons on to Palestinian homes, Palestinian schools, uh, power plants, sewage plants and so on, universities. It's therefore a duty for us to try to end that. Um, it's not that we're complicit, the corporations are complicit in this dreadful crime, but citizens really need in their own interest and in the interest of the, the Palestinian people to try to bring this hellish uh, trade to an end. One Israeli general has described the situation very well, uh, General El Kabetz, I think that's the pronunciation. He told a gathering of potential buyers of Israeli military hardware that we have learned lots from Gaza. It's a great laboratory. So the people of Palestine are being used as laboratory rats for the Israeli armaments industry, which commands an enhanced premium um, on its goods in the International Arms Bazaar, precisely because they claim repeatedly that it's all been tested um, on the people of Palestine. If the testimony of El Kabetz is not enough, Avner Ben Zaken, who's the head of the Israeli Army's technology and logistics branch, expanded the point. He said, quote, if I develop a product and I want to test it in the field, I only have to go five or 10 kilometers from my base <clears throat> and I can look and see what's happening to the equipment. I get feedback. So it makes the development process faster and much more efficient. We're not talking here about a community or a country defending itself. We're talking about a worldwide armaments industry, a business run for profit and, uh, and testing its products on the imprisoned people of Palestine. If those reasons don't add up to enough to persuade you to come to the conference in Glasgow, on May the 9th, Saturday, May the 9th, ending the Scottish arms trade with Israel, uh, you might like to know that very sinister Israeli surveillance technology is already deployed in a pilot project in Glasgow city centre. The coalition government in London has financed this pilot project, very reminiscent of how the poll tax was uh, piloted in Scotland before being applied elsewhere, uh, but it will be spread out, it will be cascaded out to other councils if there's not a sufficient opposition. This technology can identify people walking down the street, it has personal facial identification software, it also has emotional uh, identification uh, software. So if you're having a bad day you could be picked out. And then the key selling point which the NICE um, systems uh, executives, executives have used with Glasgow City Council is that it then brings in a huge volume of data um, to uh, it brings it together in order to get a picture of the person who is being picked up on the camera. So anything you've posted to Facebook, anything that any records that you might have, dental, medical, if you haven't paid a parking ticket, um, anything that the police have on you, can all be brought together in very short time. And it's this extremely sinister and intrusive snooping 
which has been developed in order to crush or try to crush the, the Palestinian struggle for freedom, which is now being bought by the British government and deployed in Glasgow city centre. And when people say you've got, if you've got nothing to hide, you don't need to worry about it, that's not the issue. So intense and so intrusive is this technology developed um, on the, you know, developed through Israeli experience of trying to penetrate every molecule of Palestinian civil society, that it denies people in Glasgow uh, the right to any private space. So we need to resist it, not just to support the beleaguered people of Palestine, but to defend what's left of our own uh, rights to privacy. Strathlyde Pension Fund invests in the Raytheon Corporation and scandalously invests in 12 of the 20 biggest armaments companies in the world. Organised and led and managed by Glasgow City Council on behalf of 11 other councils, it, it means that the pension funds of public service employees in this part of Scotland, and obviously elsewhere, are being used to enable Raytheon to supply Israel with its weapons of mass killing. We can win. Scotland has a long tradition of international solidarity. We have Mandela Place in Glasgow city centre, which uh, exemplifies that. But a, a little known example, but equally wonderful, is that in 1973, Scottish engineering workers responded to the bloody and brutal uh, regime in, uh, in, in Chile, which, which overthrew the democratically elected regime, by refusing to repair Rolls-Royce engines by, and also by refusing to allow the engines to leave the factory in East Kilbride. Um, this shows that this is the gold standard. This shows what is possible when people are alerted, are aware of what's happening at the other end of their weapon systems and that, are, and that workers in armaments factories can play a key role in bringing this, uh, in bringing this trade to an end. So those are the arguments why we think that you should attend the conference on May the 9th. I hope you'll consider them carefully and I hope you'll go to the website and register um, www.esati, ESATI, the initials of ending Scottish arms trade with Israel, .org. So www.esati.org. But this is a small uh, email, a small uh, video from the Scottish Palestine Solidarity Campaign.